Friends, welcome to our homestead. Just because something has always been there for you does not mean it always will be. Are you prepared for when it is gone? Let's talk about that. So what am I referring to? Well, I'm specifically referring to, in this instance, the power grid, but it can bleed over into other systems in our country right now. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video, referring to some cyber attacks, even at my wife's hospital. Now, you know that I do not give like fear mongering information, but I've been monitoring these news stories over the past year, year and a half, talking about our power grid and how vulnerable it really is. Let me give you some statistics on our current power grid, and then I want you to prepare. I want you to prepare for the event that it might not be there tomorrow. Now you're gonna say, come on, that'll never happen. Well, it's starting to, and you're gonna start to see it more and more and more. And this isn't from just government sources. This is from independent regulatory associations, weather companies, all of those. They're all looking at it from a different angle and seeing the same problem. Oh, Eric, it'll be fine. It's always been there. Do not get trapped in that thinking that it will always be there because nothing ever is always there. Except your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we can talk about that all you want in the comment section below. Okay, we all know what happened in Texas in 2020 with uh, winter storm Uri. It knocked out power. So many places didn't have power for a long period of time. The grid is fragile. Texas grid is fragile, but so is the rest of the country, mostly from the east, from up in Quebec, actually, because they're part of the eastern interconnection, and all the way up into Saskatchewan, which is rated as extremely fragile. So check this out. Several weather outlets are predicting one of the worst winters in recent memory. Those weather outlets are looking at what's called a really strong El Nino, and we can already see this playing out in Germany. Germany just had a record-breaking snow. They have more snow than they've ever had before. That global warming's really kicking in. But here, let me read this to you. This is really fascinating stuff. Both the NERC, which is the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, and the National Rural Electric Co-op Association have warned repeatedly that the grid is extremely fragile. They've also warned that it is extremely susceptible to weather outages and cyber attacks. And here's another thing that is measurable, right? The NERC also warned about inadequate backup generator weatherization. And that's something that did happen here in Texas during the winter storm Uri and the power outages that we had here. They also warned again of limitation to natural gas infrastructure to power those backup generators. And they focused in on the Northeast part of the United States in the severe lack of natural gas infrastructure up there. And I'll tell you this story right now. I sit on the board of directors for my local nonprofit rural water corporation. And we attempted to get a generator because our old one would not power our big 50 horse pumps when the power went out. We have finally got that new generator. It took us 18 months to get that equipment when we needed it installed almost immediately. So obtaining new equipment, new generators is extremely difficult right now. And that generator, yes, it's a 120 kW generator. It took us initially, it was going to be 60 grand. And then the price jumped to over a hundred thousand dollars. So not only did it take actually more than twice as long as they originally said, it cost twice as much. Well, how does that play into things? Well, many of the parts in that generator, including many of the parts and pieces to repair our electric grid, are made in China. And we are beholden to them, and they're having supply chain issues, they're having production issues, we've got tensions with them politically. All that affects the grid, all of it. 
Okay, let's go back to what the NERC was talking about, our grid, and their warnings about it really quick. They said over half of Americans are at risk from prolonged power outages going forward. Now, our national average for being out per year is only two hours per person. So that's actually pretty good. And it is still one of the best grids in the world. It is the largest machine ever built, the American grid. I think there's something like 500,000 miles of cable. Maybe it's 200,000 miles of cable anyway, or transmission lines. But if you compare that to like South Africa, which used to be or was coming up to like first world country status, they have six hours a day that they're not, or that they don't have any power. They have these like rolling blackouts and you're scheduled in your area. It's pretty crazy. You should go check that out. Okay, this too. Even our own Federal Energy Regulatory Commission found that New York City almost lost power during winter storm Elliot last, was it last year or in 2021? They almost lost power. Can you imagine New York City without power? It happened in 2003 and I remember this, and it, it was chaos, looting, craziness, and they almost lost it again. And that's because the natural gas generators started to fail because of technical issues or lack of gas <laughs> due to the wells in Western New York State freezing, the ones near, I think it was Utica, and reducing production by 23 to 54%. That will start to happen everywhere. And again, you're saying to yourself, ah, that's never going to happen. It is on the edge of happening. So I need you to prepare. And then friends, couple all this with continual shutdowns of coal plants and nuclear power plants. That's absolutely insane to do that when the grid is struggling with other sources of energy to try to power it. You can't keep shutting things down and expect everything to run. Okay, here is another crazy statistic that I'm going to tell you. Our electric grid, the last time it was updated and majorly added onto, was in the 1960s and 1970s. It's that old. Most things have not been updated in over 25 years. Now, I think this current administration did set aside some money for it, but it was tiny, tiny compared to so many other things we spend money on. When this is so critical, because if tomorrow, friends, you ran out of electricity and all your food went bad and you couldn't turn the lights on and you couldn't heat your house, what does that drive people to do? That drives people to get pretty desperate and pretty crazy, uh, especially if it's in a big city. What happens if people start you know, freezing because they don't have power. Now check out this insanity. You may have heard of physical attacks happening on our power grid stations. And it was in the news, it was up in the Northeast and in North Carolina, and there was one the other day at a uh, nuclear power plant, actually. 163 attacks in 2022. That is the highest it's ever been. Uh, the previous highest was Two years prior in 2020 at 94. Before that, it hardly happened at all. So people are shooting at them, people are running their cars into them, people are you know doing other things, breaking into them, messing up uh, electrical equipment. Why? What is going on? 163 attacks and that had an effect on a lot of people with power outages. But some of those attacks were cyber attacks. Now, I couldn't find really solid information on the actual number of cyber attacks contained within that. However, there was one attack that happened a month and a half ago in Pennsylvania on a water system. That cyber attack was linked to Iranian hackers. And friends, that is going to happen more and more. So the Government Accountability Office, is it? The GAO, they looked at the vulnerability from smart appliances and how that can take down our grid as well. So all new appliances are somehow connected to Wi-Fi. They're all talking with Wi-Fi and talking back over the internet to certain places. Well, 
the vulnerability there is if a hacker gets in there and he places some malware, he can create what's called a botnet. All your appliances in all your houses will start turning on. Once that is done, that affects the grid. Obviously, if everybody's appliances are turning on full blast all the time, say you're not home, you're at work, all your appliances are on full blast. And so is everybody else's who bought these connected smart appliances. That will drive the grid to not be able to, you know, have enough power, not be able to generate enough power to be able to supply everybody and it'll shut down. Are you prepared for change? Is your mind prepared for change? I got more here. The U.S. Society of Civil Engineers gave our energy system a grade. It was a C minus. That's horrible. It used to be an A. Even our energy secretary recently said that our grid could be completely <laughs> shut down by a foreign actor. Uh, that is a pretty crazy thing to admit. It could be political wind, if you know what I mean, but she admitted that. So I'll tell you something that hits close to home. Right now, my wife at her hospital and the entire hospital system is having to hand write everything and hand chart everything. Everything was in the computer. Guess what? There was a hack at Ardent Health Systems. Ardent has about 30 hospitals and 19,000 employees in the United States. They linked it to Russian hackers. Those Russian hackers actually asked, asked for a ransom and Ardent told them, told them no. Ardent backs up all of their patient information but they have to go in the back end and rebuild the entire system and re-upload. I think they have like seven different backups. But anyway, it takes time. So all of the hospitals are having to hand chart and many of the young nurses and doctors do not know how to do that. So it's taking the older nurses and nurses that were actually foreigners, like my wife was born in the Philippines, they hand charted everything over there to help everybody else out in figuring out how to get things organized because they don't have the use of the computer at all. And they said they're gonna be down for about a month. So is that affecting patients' lives? Absolutely. It's causing delays and treatment and confusion and stuff like that. So you need to be prepared. One of the ways that you can be prepared is getting your own solar power system, your own power for your house. I don't care how big it is when you start, it can be very small. You can spend as much as, I think, maybe 2,500 bucks and get something that'll power your refrigerator and some lights. You might need a wood stove to you know, get some heat in your house, but you gotta start somewhere. You also should have your own backup water source, whether that's, a, it could be a 50 gallon drum full of water. I don't care. Just have something because everybody always says, well, it won't happen to us. Well, until it does. And that's what preparedness is all about. It's not fear. It's not freaking out about something. It's not running out and spending all your money on one silly thing, right? It is slowly preparing, anticipating that something may happen. And if it doesn't, great. But look into getting something small, like some rain barrels, and just a small inverter and a few solar panels to start with. That's the beauty of these modern solar systems is you don't have to spend a giant amount to power your entire house from the onset, right? You can start small and add onto it as you need to. The links for all my solar videos are up here and all of the equipment that I use is linked in the description below. And then I will link my rain system playlist at the end of this video. All right, friends, don't panic. Take that information and properly apply it to what you need to do to prepare for eventually, in my opinion, a crash of our grid. And then also prepare yourself for the crash of potentially the banking system or the water system or the hospital and medical system. There's one common denominator out there and that is the computer. And if everything's linked to that, all those systems could be easily hacked changed or taken offline. That's actually why you don't see me do a lot of communication videos with our solar or our other equipment in the house. All of them are Wi-Fi enabled. 
Could those be remotely turned on? Potentially, but I have purposefully not connected any of those to any Wi-Fi at all. If you have any questions for me, please leave them for me in the comments section below. Now go check these videos out. Like I said, these are our rain water installation videos. Have a beautiful blessed day. We'll see you next time.